good morning everyone uh, so as described earlier like i'll walk you through the hot star journey from ec2 to kubernetes specifically from ipl 18 to ipl 19 okay myself prakhar joshi i am a software development engineer at hotstar i do most of the infrastructure work there okay so a bit about context about hotstar we are like number one ott platform in india uh, we have uh, content in more than 15 languages we have live on demand content we have uh, sports we have retail content and lot of other things i guess everyone has been to the website uh, okay so let's deep dive into like what is the number we are facing and at what scale we are operating so during the world cup uh, semi final between india and new zealand we have seen like 25 million plus concurrency uh, on our platform uh, we have seen like uh, more than around 1 million 1.1 million rps on specific services not all but specific services uh, we have seen like uh, the click stream messages that we uh, provide the uh, data team that works on that we have seen like more than 10 million uh, click streams during that specific time and we have like <coughs> video encoding and video trans transcoding for more than like uh, 100 hours uh, and like the content is more than 100 hours and we transport that like every day we do these things so this is just a uh, scale and the uh, like the scale at which we operate day to day life so just to set context like we what we will do we will go through the journey of hotstar from how it started in ipl 18 and how we operated what we did and then what challenges we faced and like because of these challenges what actions we have taken and what is the state of hotstar during world cup and currently so i'll just give you a context like what hotstar was at ipl 18 i will uh, discuss more of the infrastructure platform things on which hotstar was running so <coughs> we were running on ec2 stack we were having uh, elbs uh, which are sort of ingress for our applications we have those ELB, elbs attached to our auto scaling groups which scales the application as per the requirements uh, and then we used amis to deploy our applications those amis were pre-backed we were using packer uh, to deploy these uh, create these amis and deploy these applications on the ec2 machines and we were using Jenkins for CI CD pipelines. And for infrastructure deployment, we were using Terraform infrastructure as a code. We were not doing anything manual. Uh, we were trying to like, uh, we have stopped at that time also, but again, we like never uh, ask anyone to do any manual changes because whenever the automation scripts or whenever the deployment goes on, it will override things. So we <laughs> believe in like, you should like uh, always make changes in code you can trace them because it's difficult to debug issues when something breaks in production because of the manual changes you have done at one place and it can affect you at other places so yeah that was the state of hotstar at uh, ipl 18 and we have seen like around 10.3 million concurrency that time we might have seen more but there were challenges and there were issues that even we faced but uh, yeah, so those were the issues that we have, I have like mentioned here. We'll discuss the, them also, like what are the issues we have seen and why like we were not able to handle more than that or even if we are handl handling them, then there was a bit of issue in user experience and all these things. So <coughs> the first issue we have seen is like handling search. So you know like when a cricket match is going on and the peak of the traffic that comes on our platform is during the IPL or World Cup like cricket matches. So what we have seen is like if something interesting going on within a match or something happens, then what happens like you see a surge of requests coming, surge of new users coming to your platform and you have to handle them seamlessly. So uh, that surge handling we have faced like it's quite difficult in EC2. Uh, we have seen like uh, we were not able to scale uh, as much as we want to scale during the scale, uh, during the uh, surge that we get but uh, uh, so EC2 takes some time to boot up like if you have an application which is running on your EC2 machines you have to let's say you have to scale from just an example 22 and you need uh, 30 machines so if you spin up 10 machines at a time it takes some time and it is just one service we have like around I don't know the count but more than 40 50 services 
which are running and you have to scale everything. You can't just scale one service and it will be done. So <coughs> that was one issue. The first issue leads to the other one because we know like there can be surge at any time of the live event or any time. So what we used to do, we used to keep uh, like the buffer of the resources like okay like if this much surge comes then we will handle it. We have these resources there. So what we used to keep is like we used to keep some extra buffer with our infrastructure which uh, which is not good like at the scale that you are running like if you are running uh, serving 25 million concurrency and still you are keeping some buffer okay, okay it can reach high then it's difficult as it can reach to the hardware problems also you might see we have seen like capacity issues uh, at AWS also a specific instance type in that region in that AZ is not available. So these type of issues we have seen. Another thing we have seen is like uh, when you scale up these much EC2 machines, uh, the EC2 itself calls the AWS API internally. We have seen like throttling of those APIs, which is EC2 internally calls to AWS, and we have seen like we were getting throttled on that, which lead to which lead us to not scale at a time, but we have to do the step scaling. We can't scale like let's say the <coughs> let's say we decided okay, okay we are running on a 20 million concurrency platform and we want to go to 25 million and we have to uh, do like scale up 50 instances at a time. So for one service if it's 50 then it can be more than 200, 300 instances at a time across the platform. So there are account level rate limiting and all this internal things that AWS does. So <coughs> those issues also we have faced. So these were the challenges that we were facing and we were trying to like overcome these things during the live events. Uh, so that was one part then we decided like okay whatever patch or whatever logic we are putting behind it there is something we are missing and if we go if we want to like break more records if you want to like double the concurrency or if you want to like make our platform more faster we have to think something else. So we started exploring like how what other platforms we can use for Hotstar. So we started exploring containers. We started exploring how to orchestrate those containers and how to run those containers and manage them. So like couple of things we have like found plus points in that and those are like uh, containers you can run anywhere. Like uh, for EC2 like uh, if your application is there then you need a local setup and everything. Containers like if you create a docker, just an example, if, uh, let's say we are using docker. So if you create like your 10 applications you have 10 docker file, you create one docker compose and you can spin up the whole infrastructure anywhere. So these type of things, local uh, deployment becomes fast. Uh, you can, you don't have to like <coughs> depend on one cloud provider. All these things were positive there. Uh, to boot up containers, it's quite easy, like uh, as compared to EC2. So as compared to EC2, it's quite easy to spin up a new container. Let's say you are running with 10 containers, you want 15. It's quite easy as compared to EC2. The resources are optimized because uh, what happened earlier we used to have the whole EC2 machine for one application. Let's say my JVM is running, it requires 2.5 cores and it requires let's say some X amount of memory. And the lowest <coughs> CPU that I am getting as a hardware is 3 core or 4 core. So I have to take 4 core, I can't deal with 2 core machine. So these some, so these type of things we have realized like at scale it bites you, like you can't just throw away like 1.5 core or 2 cores of instance because you can't take the last one because it is not available. So with docker you can or with containers you can specify whatever the resource your application wants, what memory they want. So as the boot up is easy for the containers, it becomes seamless for like we can scale it to any number, whatever you want. There are challenges, it's not like a, you can just keep the, throw the number and it will scale to that but it's as compared to EC2 it's like seamless for us. Uh, let's go to production time because what we have seen like <coughs> we have created base container on top of that their application gets deployed. So the whole deployment procedure has been standardized. Earlier it was like some applications are deploying on their own way, some are using different instance group, some, some are performing some uh, in different instance group differently. So these type of like mismatching across the organization has been reduced and uh, now as a DevOps guy I know as an infrastructure guy, I know like what's the platform for any application. If I have to debug any production thing of any application earlier, I used to switch context. Okay, this application, these type of setups are there in their production, then I have to debug. So <coughs> these type of things have been improved. 
for it. So as I talked like Docker, uh, we have decided we will go to the container, but how to orchestrate this? So Kubernetes is the best fit for us we have found uh, in present, like what we can use to, uh, use, uh, we can use for handling our infrastructure. Uh, we have <coughs> uh, this, because of Kubernetes, we have like standardized deployments across Hotstar because uh, the way now application uh, deploys is like you just give me the, your application name, some context about the application, what resource you want, what memory you want, what's your image, Docker image is, all these things you just give me, I'll deploy everything uh, on the cloud for you. So it's standardized, no, nothing is manual there, like some tags are required, some tags are missing, uh, some parameters are not there, some parameters are there. So these type of things have like gone away from Hotstar. Uh, one clip deployment because <coughs> We, as we have standardized the deployment, so now we have a separate flow for deploying your applications. You can just write, uh, we use Kessonnet for uh, creating the, uh, your JSON, JSON objects to Kubernetes objects to convert into YAML and then apply it on the cluster. So these type of things have help, helped us and also the developers, like they don't have to think much about like how these things will gonna happen happen, like how my alerts will be set, how, where my logs will go. All these things are like out of the box provided to them because we have base images which do all these things. <laughs> logging and alerting has been improved because earlier what used to happen, some applications are debug, logging debug logs, some are just logging error logs, some are logging some different logs. It has been standardized. Every application can give their own information like what type of logging you want and why, like if I am an infrastructure guy, I should know like why some, some guy is logging uh, debug logs if it's not required because at the end of the day I have to manage the logs. So these type of things were there. So we can like, at a single place I know like what's going on across the organization for me. And <coughs> we used GoCD for CI/CD. Uh, GoCD is again deployed on Kubernetes cluster itself. Uh, and uh, it's a, like, uh, this is the best fit for what we have found for us. But all of, uh, apart from all of this, the best thing we have found is like <coughs> request best scaling for our applications. So in EC2 world, what used to happen is like we used to uh, get the concurrency, okay, our platform is running on some X amount of concurrency, so we have to scale for 2X or 1.5X. So there is some manual things we have to do. We have written scripts and everything, but again, like you never know when you will have to go to 1.5X or 2X. So these type of things we used to do manually, we have to manually trigger the scripts and uh, perform the scaling. And we have to manually check all these things. Now what happens like our applications have become intelligent enough to scale themselves. The way they get the request, <coughs> the application spin up the containers on its own uh, based on the horizontal pod scaling that uh, Kubernetes provide and we are using the uh, metrics that we get from Prometheus for a request that an application is getting. So these type of combinations we have done and this request base has just made our life easier for us. Because now during the live event, like earlier there used to be some person or someone is responsible for scaling the hot start. Now it's like it will scale on its own. So you don't have to worry about, okay, something interesting going on, we have to scale the platform, otherwise latencies will increase, some errors will throw up. So all these things have been reduced. <coughs> so far so good, but again like if you talk at the level of Hotstar where you have more than 50 services, 45 services, uh, just thinking of migration, migration and doing the migration is a, another different story. So like introducing a new thing in an organization that I, like for a team is okay, but if you are have to introduce it for an organization level, there are a lot of challenges you have to face. Like we have to dockerize the application. So there are a couple of ways to dockerize the application. Tell the developers, okay, uh, you, we will give you a sample docker file. You can use this and create your own docker files. That is one way. Another way is like we give them the base docker images. They can, on top of that, they can build their applications and they can proceed. Again, like what image which we should give? Like at organization, when you have like more than 40, 50 teams, then you have to <coughs> uh, cover all the case, edge cases. And you don't want to make your single Docker image that huge K at the time of scale, it has to download that image in a node and it is taking like GBs to download this. 
just the base image and then it will do these things. So these type of issues we have faced, uh, we have improved those things. So these are the, <coughs> that is one issue we have faced. Another issue is earlier applications are running on single EC2 machine, whatever CPU they want, whatever memory they want, they were getting. Now we have reduced it because we have seen like we were uh, giving more than what is required for an ap application. Let's say <coughs> a JVM is running. We were providing four cores and four GP, but we have realized like it can work on 2.5 cores or three cores and 2.5 or three GP, something like that. So why waste one core and one extra GP? At scale when you are running like 1000 containers for an application, you are like just wasting uh, the hardware and CPU. So <coughs> again, when we reduce this, we have to make sure like everything is working as well and it should have improved. So these application performance we have to check for all the application from scratch. So it was like your application is the first time it is going to production. It is as, as same as the first time it is going to production. <coughs> Again, the third thing was cost optimization. Like we have reduced, uh, this is not like uh, we have reduced uh, like crazy amount of cost, but the features that we are getting against the uh, against the cost that we are paying is really like improved for us. And the way we scale our applications now, the way we uh, do the performance tuning for our application has become uh, good for us. The fourth thing was like I, as I said, like the autopilot mode or the request based scaling, like or at what number each application has to scale. You have to give that number to the uh, Kubernetes or HP object, like <coughs> at some amount, like if you are getting 10,000 requests, then scale. If you are getting 5,000 requests, then scale. So finding that number is difficult for us because right now it looks easy, okay, uh, scale for 10,000, but why 10,000? Why not some other number? Why can't it handle more requests? Or why it is handling 10K, why it was running on 5K earlier? So all these findings uh, were like the challenges we have to fa face and we have like worked on those things. The other thing was like the cluster management, we manage our own cluster in off cluster management we do. Uh, so as we said, like when we scale these things, right? So you have to make sure like with the scaling of your application, your infra uh, components are also scaling, right? Prometheus, uh, like uh, <coughs> Filebeat, all these things. So whatever extra infra com components that you are running, uh, the DNS that we are running in the cluster, all these things we have to make sure like they are running properly. <coughs> so, after that, like once we started migrating these things, we made sure like the how we are making uh, the platform ready for the live events or the big days where we see a lot of crazy traffic on our platforms. So we did the load testing of the applications. We have like load generators and all these things. I think Gaurav will be talking about how we uh, test our applications for and make our applications prepare for live events. <laughs> we have like uh, during the game day preparation we have realized like whatever the scaling parameters we have given like either they are uh, not tuned up we have to like we can tune them more properly so that at load or at peak we are not just throwing resources to them. Uh, <coughs> the other thing was capacity allocation like even though you are moving away from EC2 but your nodes are again like some hardware so that you have to scale. If you are running to 200 or 500 nodes, then you need 500 EC2 instances there or 500 hardware there, which can provide you the CPUs and memory and handle the uh, your containers. So that uh, allocation we have to, we have also worked on that. Uh, <coughs> again, as I mentioned, like the horizontal scaling of infra resources, because and if your application is not scaling, then it will affect your one part of the application or one part of Hotstar or one pl part of platform. But if your infra context are not, uh, infra resources are not uh, scaling, then it can affect at a cluster level or an organization level. Let's say your Prometheus is not scaling, then you will not get any metrics. You are not, uh, if you are not getting any metrics, your applications are not able to scale because uh, they don't know what's the current request your applications are getting. So these type of things we kept in mind and we prepare and we focus on uh, these elements as we move towards the IPL and that was the <coughs> state of Hotstar at IPL. We were using GoCD for CI/CD pipelines. We were using Vault and Console for secret management. Like uh, on runtime, at runtime, we inject those secrets for the Docker containers uh, for the applications inside the containers when they spin up. 
uh, we were using Terraform earlier. We use Terraform. We love Terraform. So we use Terraform for infra deployments. Uh, <coughs> we are doing in-house cluster management, as I mentioned, like all the core components of infra, like the networking inside the cluster, uh, Prometheus, logging, alerting, monitoring. Everything we do in-house only. Uh, like the cluster management we do on our own. The major thing we have achieved is like the autopilot mode for scaling our application and that was like a huge win for us because as an infrastructure guy or as a DevOps person you know like when you have to be there during some events and you have you are responsible for scaling your application then it becomes difficult like one time job is okay twice it's okay but IPL runs for 60 days and then World Cup comes it will run for another 45 days so it's not possible at human level you can do these things at one point of time you will get frustrated and things go away. So that is the big thing we have achieved uh, during the migration. <coughs> so this is a bit of uh, comparison that I have, we think like we have uh, done for migrating to EC2 to KT. Uh, one more thing is like it's not like uh, EC2s were bad or KTs is some next level thing. There are issues in K Kubernetes also. There were issues in EC2 also but whatever the requirements and whatever the use cases we had EC2s were not getting fit for us. It was uh, more easier for us to move our applications and run our applications on Kubernetes as compared to EC2. So <coughs> one um, main thing was like earlier the patching of infra, con infra uh, components were difficult like let's say logging. There is some let's say uh, we were using some component in logging and there is a security issue in that component. Now each application has its own way of logging like the component they are using is same but they install on each EC2 machine so every packer thing you have to go and you have to change so that was the setup idea but what happens now everything is on our base docker images whenever we have to patch anything we can just patch the docker image we can update the tag and we can use those tags uh, in the application when the application gets deployed so devs doesn't have to care much about that like why we are changing this or we are telling devs or creating tickets for them okay, okay update this version because this has security issues. So these type of things have reduced a lot and it really speeds up the uh, deployment and functioning of an, at an organization level. <coughs> so uh, another thing was like I'm again focusing on the autopilot mode because we know the pain that we have faced in IPL 18 during Asia Cup all these things like how difficult it is to be there and because it's a manual thing right you miss for Two, two minutes or one minute or even seconds if you miss K, you have to give a scale up call or you have to run the script to scale it up. If you don't do this, your user experience will become bad. So it can impact at a global level. So those are like critical components but we were doing it manually. So <coughs> yeah, those were uh, the like differences, major differences we have seen. Another thing was like uh, <coughs> scaling for for the traffic and the, for the pattern that we receive scaling containers is quite easy for us as compared to EC2. The challenges we have already discussed these things. So this is like a summary for whatever we have done in last one and a half year. Like we are scaling applications uh, <coughs> based on the request based model. Whatever request each application is getting they are scaling on its own. You don't have to like keep a ladder or all these things like how many uh, backends you need for that concurrency, how many backends you need for that concurrency. All these things have been gone away. Uh, scaling is better in KTS as compared to EC2. Uh, <coughs> as we have to keep the buffer of resources, we were wasting a lot of resources there. The cost issue was there. The hardware problem was there. Even we have to talk to AWS before. Right now also we have to talk to uh, cloud providers before this, but again like it has reduced a lot. Earlier we were like okay, if we don't get a resource the application can't scale or we have to compromise with the node type or something like that. So <coughs> these were there then again like we have standardized the deployments and it's really like it looks like it's a okay thing it should be there but believe me like when you start your organization and like you have like 50 60 uh, teams growing together it's difficult to keep the track of all the teams. So making this standardized after the way it was earlier it was a huge success for us and uh, again like once the deployment and everything is standardized it was easier for us to bring any application to production 
it takes less than a day now to set up uh, <coughs> all the applications from scratch once they have their application ready we can create docker and uh, yeah thank you uh, yeah i think that's all from my side my you guys can follow me or catch up me on twitter this is my twitter handler and you can also connect on the email the official email address and you guys should visit to tech.hotstar.com and see the blogs that we are writing and thank you. Okay. Sure, sure. Thanks, Baka. Questions? Yeah, hi. I have a question. Uh, so you spoke about you are moving from EC2 to uh, KH, that's Kubernetes open source containers. Yeah. Uh, was this uh, like, you know, moving away from Amazon because Amazon also has ECS where it has, you know, a container service. And it also has really good integration with Terraform where it's, I think, much simpler than using KH with Terraform. Yeah. So, so first of all, it was not uh, regarding any cloud provider or anything. It was just the pain that we were getting because of the requirements we were getting. The ECS thing that you have mentioned, we have tried ECS also, but the use cases and the customization that we need at cluster level were not available at the time when we were started migrating to ECS. So it was like uh, you don't have that much control on the cluster level. The way we want to tune our application, the way we want to tune our infra things, the way we want to tune our master nodes to give us some values or some things that were not available at ECS. Like you can't handle that much things on its own. So then we decided like let's move away from uh, like the service that is providing the masters and ECS for us, but let's do it in also. So yeah, that was the major reason for us to migrate to uh, in-house cluster management as compared to the cloud providers that we have provided. We are still on like AWS only. It's not like we have moved away because our nodes are still there. It's just that the management of the nodes, management of the master nodes, the DNS of the cluster, these things we handle. So instead of getting it from some third party things, we are handling. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Yeah. So I think he partly covered what I wanted to ask, whether you really moved from AWS to something else or, so basically your talk was clearly about EC2 versus Kubernetes. In I, way, you compared EC2 and yeah. Kubernetes, in a way uh, it is kind of confusing because you are ultimately using EC2 only at the back. You are just managing EC2 by using Kubernetes. No, no. So let me make this clear. Like uh, I'm not comparing any two products here. I was saying like the way we faced issues in one platform and how the other platform helped us uh, fighting those issues and making our life easier as an infrastructure guy or at an organization level, how the other platform helped us more as compared to EC2. I'm not saying like everyone or like EC2 should be, EC2 is bad or something is good or you should migrate to that. It's not like that. The use cases that we had, we were facing issues and we have seen like in live events, like we are not able to do it as per the uh, expectations that we had. So that's why we moved. Again, in KTS also, we use uh, <coughs> nodes, right? The nodes that are running on EC2 itself. But the way, just give you an instance. I'll give you an instance. So let's say you have ten, you have ten applications, right? So earlier, each application, each process of your application is running on a single EC2 machine. That was the architecture earlier or infrastructure that we had. So each application is using uh, in situ instances. So we were wasting a lot of resources and everything. So scaling and all these things become difficult. I'm not saying that Kubernetes is just one click and over the night you can scale to whatever. Even at 25 million, we had our own challenges. Uh, we had issues where we have to scale nodes also. So all these things were there, but they have reduced a lot so that we can focus more on our core infra components as compared to these issues like, okay, we are not able to scale our platform. Instead of that, we should work on making our Prometheus more better, making our logging more better, making other products more better. So we get time now to work on these things. So that's what, like, I think that's what I want to conclude here. A quick question. We have half a minute. Is it working here? Oh, I, in the meantime, okay. uh, sorry. Uh, 
my question is uh, you mentioned prometheus but what do you guys use for centralized logging alerting monitoring and uh, stuff like that what tools do you use and you haven't even uh, mentioned cdns so how much uh, you know it helps how you guys in your so sorry sorry to cut you off uh, we'll start with the next session and please uh, yeah, take yeah, it, take, can, it, take it off sure. take it, take it. thank you very much yeah. thanks prakar